The Stepfather is a psychological thriller from 1987 which is loosely based on the real-life murderer John List. In 1971, List killed his wife, mother and children at his home in New Jersey before completely disappearing. Due to the murders being so well planned, it took the neighbourhood a good month to realise that something wasn't quite right. List later changed his identity, remarried and effectively eluded justice for 18 years before being apprehended in Virginia in 1989. The film opens with our main character Jerry Blake, cleaning himself up and changing his appearance, preparing himself for his new future under a new identity after murdering his family. The film then cuts to Jerry's new life where he works as an estate agent and lives with his new wife Susan and her daughter Stephanie, who is apprehensive about her mother's new husband. Throughout the film, Jerry tries to win the trust of Stephanie. He even buys her a puppy. However, Stephanie keeps her guard up and remains suspicious of Jerry despite his efforts to win her over. Screenwriter Donald E. Westlake actually based the character of Stephanie on his real-life stepdaughter, who he was having difficulty getting along with at the time. Due to her mother firmly taking the side of her new husband, Stephanie confides in her psychologist, Dr. Bunduran, for emotional support. Concerned about his patient's well-being and safety, Bonduran attempts to contact Jerry Blake. After failing to make any contact with Jerry, and under the understanding that Jerry is flat out avoiding him, Bonduran arranges an appointment with Jerry for a house viewing under a false alias. During the house viewing, Bonduran finds his opportunity to question Jerry about his family values mentality. After one too many of the doctor's questions being directed more towards Jerry's life than the property, leads Jerry to falsely suspect that Bonduran is an undercover cop and kills him. Later, Stephanie runs away from home after Jerry reacts aggressively to her boyfriend Paul kissing her on the porch. After realising he has failed to win over his stepdaughter and his current predicament doesn't exactly coincide with his idea of a perfect family life, Jerry quits his job and establishes a new identity for himself in another town. As far as what happens after this, I'm not going to tell because I wouldn't want to ruin the brilliant climax that this film has. The Stepfather was directed by Joseph Rubin, who also directed Dreamscape. Despite the subject matter, Rubin wanted to avoid the movie falling into the slasher movie subgenre. He wanted to give more depth to the character of Jerry, and wanted people to almost sympathise with a man who, above all else, just wants the all-American lifestyle. Throughout the film, Blake talks a lot about the importance of family and what the all-American family life means to him. This is definitely something most people can relate to, which in my opinion makes it even more disturbing because the audience see relatable desires of their own in a character who is based on a real-life murderer. A killer tries to create his own perfect family through lies and forgery, only to kill that family off if the family he's worked hard to establish isn't quite to his standards. The real case obviously wasn't that complex, in fact, List said that his motivations for the murder of his family was related to financial struggles and frustration that some family members weren't keeping to their religious faith. In the original drafts, the screenplay featured flashback scenes to Jerry's childhood which show how he was systematically abused. However, Reuben felt like it would be more chilling to leave this out of the final cut, adding more mystery to the killer's background. Terry O'Quinn portrays the character of Jerry Blake perfectly. His performance is the perfect mix of deranged colour and typical American father figure. He was able to switch between the two extremely well, which proves just how versatile of an actor O'Quinn is. Cinematographer John Lindley said that on set O'Quinn played an acoustic guitar, sang folk songs and told jokes, a very drastic contrast to the character he portrays in the film. The film's soundtrack is also very good. The most notable track being Pat Benatar's Run Between the Raindrops, which I feel fits perfectly with the teenage struggles of Stephanie and encapsulates that timeless 80s feeling. The film spawned two sequels and a remake. Stepfather 2 saw Terry O'Quinn return to the role of Jerry Blake, but like with most sequels it didn't really live up to the original, and O'Quinn later feared that his role in the movies would lead to him being typecast. Overall, The Stepfather is definitely worth checking out. It steers away from the cliches of a typical run-of-the-mill slasher movie, and I'd say is more of a character study more than anything else. I rate it 9 family-sized birdhouses out of 10. Thanks for watching.